We're live. We're live. How you doing, everybody? We're live. We're back. How's it going today? Uh, welcome to uh, Friday, January the 15th. Surprise live show on Traveling with Bruce, Stock Markets with Bruce, on the Stock Markets with uh, Traveling with Bruce uh, Facebook group page. Welcome, guys. I hope you're having a good day today. Um, it's Friday, baby. Uh, what a week. What, what, uh, just another week. Um, unreal um i'm so glad it's friday i'm going live twice right now for an hour with all of you and then i'll be live again starting at three o'clock eastern on the uh, traveling with bruce channel for uh, sponsor members and uh and uh, we will be playing trivia there as well uh as a matter of fact today a little surprise for you guys um we're going to play a trivia question here today. Um, before I get off the air here, uh, we're going to fire up one of my trivia questions. Fire it up and see if all of you guys here can handle it. And then uh, we'll shut down this show, go over to the other side, become a sponsor member, and join us for the rest of the trivia if you like. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to that. Uh, welcome one, welcome all. Um, unbelievable week in the uh, cruise business again. Unbelievable week in everything else. And... Um, what a week for the stock markets. Those of you who are joining me on Stock Markets with Bruce, welcome to uh, the uh, dual live cast, live cast live show that I occasionally will uh, pull out of my hat. And uh, uh, without any fanfare or announcement, I just go live on both channels. And i um, more than happy to answer any stock market questions any of you have out there or cruise-related questions, cruise ship, travel questions, anything like that. By all means, let me know what you are what you want me to talk about. I'll be happy to do it. Um, I'm just double-checking my big-ass iPad over here that we are indeed live on the Stock Market Channel. I've got us live on TWB, Traveling with Bruce. Welcome, everybody. And, yes, we have viewers watching me on the Stock Market Channel as well. Fantastic, guys. Nice to see you here. Um, it's been quite the... Uh, quite the time as far as uh you know news goes oh man um and there's just no end to the news unfortunately more cruise ships are heading for the scrapyard and um you know we got official kind of confirmation of some of those today i guess the uh, the marco polo which is a beloved ship from uh, the uk uh cmv used to be a cmv ship uh that ship has now been beached in india for scrappage and uh the bahamas paradise the grand celebration this is the ship that used to go from uh what was it west palm beach look i got something on there west palm beach florida to um the bahamas for like these one night two night quick runs there were two ships well the grand celebration is uh finished she also has landed in india for scrappage uh both of these ships are um, quite uh, quite old um they're uh, well over 30 plus years old each and their best days are long behind them and unfortunately in these uncertain times and with these new uh, distancing protocols and all the other health rules coming out both of these ships were not going to be compliant with what the new health rules and regulations were going to be so unfortunately that's just uh, the way it is um uh morella morella cruising has announced another delay in sailings till april and may 2021 these this is another uk uh line fred olson another favorite of the uk uh, folks uh they've delayed uh, sailings yet again i'm just reading off my notes here uh the borealis uh, from liverpool to iceland uh, that uh, cruise is supposed to happen on april the 23rd it's now delayed till may 22nd so another month uh, the Bolette uh, delayed until May 29th, uh, sailing out of Dover, and the Balmoral delayed until June the 9th, 2021. So uh, the, these these delays in the UK are serious and are quite you know extended. They're they're, they're it's not good. Um, the other day, uh, I think yesterday, I made a video talking about uh, this cruise ship right here, the the uh, Celebrity um, Millennium. Uh, this ship right here is um, going to start sailing out of Los Angeles uh, next year. This is, uh, I'm talking now, 2022. Uh, during the summer, the ship will be in Alaska, which it's done uh, numerous times already. And in September 2022, it will relocate and home port out of Los Angeles for a number of cruises to the Mexican Riviera. And that ship has been heavily uh, refurbished just in the last year and so this ship is spick and span and ready to go uh, I am sure it will be a big winner earlier this week I did a video about these guys carnival uh, lots of news out of carnival oh my god it just doesn't stop the uh, the company of course uh, announced uh, losses 2.2 billion dollars in uh, in the latest three-month reporting period 
that would be September, October, November of 2020. Um, I can tell you right now, they've lost another 2.2 billion in the next three months. Uh, <laughs> December, January, February, they're gonna lose 2.2 billion more. They've announced that they're not sailing until at least April. I don't think they're gonna sail until the fall like most other cruise lines. They've raised over $19 billion since last March when the shutdown took place. $19 billion they've raised. Absolutely incredible amount of money uh, to stave off, uh, you know, uh, elimination. Uh, they're burning uh, about um, $600 million a month right now, minimum. Um, and they say they have $9.5 billion cash on hand to ride out the uh, pandemic. $9.5 billion. Um, but what they are, what that means is they have nine, they had nine and a half billion at the end of november by the time the end of uh, uh december january february comes around the next quarter they will be down to about six and a half billion six seven billion and by the time they start sailing they'll be they'll be down to about two or three billion left on hand and they're gonna have to raise more money to pad their books because it'll take carnival with the 90 something ships they have left they used to have 115 now they're down 100 about 95 now uh, it'll take them six months to uh, nine months to get all their ships up and running again when they do start to start them up. So even if they start September, October, they won't be fully operational until the summer of 2022. <laughs> I have to keep thinking ahead. This is 2021. They're not going to start till late 2021. They'll be fully operational in 2022. And that's assuming that everything works out. Don't forget about one thing about Carnival that uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, people uh, just kind of forget about uh it comes up occasionally but it, it's not discussed often these guys have another problem they they don't they don't only have a cdc issue to deal with like everybody else the you know the virus and and, and the resailings and all that they've got environmental problems they have a judge in florida a federal judge in miami that is overseeing the company's um, operations with respect to getting them back into u.s waters with their cruise ships uh, and adhering to the environmental rules they're supposed to be adhering to because they have been in violation of uh, US pollution rules. They've been convicted already. Then they were found to be in breach of their, uh, of their uh, uh, parole uh, conditions. Uh, they violated those and so they got nailed. I think they got nailed a, a $40 million fine and another big fine of at least 20 million more and the parole lasts years. It's got years to go before it runs out. Uh, and the deal is that because of the new violations, they now have to re recertify every single ship they have from all their cruise lines. I'm not only talking the ships with the funnels, I'm talking Holland America, Princess Cruise Lines, they own Cudard, Costa, uh, p and any of their ships coming into US waters all have to individually pass a certification of the court and it's a minimum 30 to 60 day time frame for each ship to be recertified so that they uh prove to the court that they are in um compliance with the uh judgment against them the the, the conviction that they've suffered so these guys have got double the paperwork uh you know inspections and all kinds of stuff that they have to deal with that Royal Caribbean and Celebrity don't have to worry about it this time. Norwegian, they don't have to worry about Region 7 Cs and so on. So uh, a Carnival has got this secondary problem. The stock market, <clears throat> to go over to my market friends, the stock market just totally ignores that information. Uh, it, it just doesn't think about it. The, the stock market uh, people, the analysts, they never mention the... Um, they never mention the environmental problem that Carnival has. It only comes up about once a year or so, or if they're in the headlines with another violation. Um, and so a lot of investors out there are buying up Carnival stock thinking, oh, yeah, don't, don't worry about it, Bruce. The, the vaccines are out now. People are going to get their shots. And the stock's just going to keep going up because Carnival used to trade at $50, $55 a share. It's only at 25 odd bucks. What a bargain this thing is. <laughs> Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna burn off another four or five billion in cash before they even start sailing. Then they've got to go through these two full blown recertification protocols. Uh, Carnival won't make a profit until 2024, and even then, the profit they're gonna make the the, the big accomplishment for Carnival in 2024, they broke even. <laughs> they they stopped losing money uh, to actually get on the other side of the ledger. They're carrying now I don't know another 
10 plus billion in debt. They've, it's, 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 it's insane. They, they have got hundreds of millions of dollars, if not a billion a year in interest expenses that are now on top of their expenses to operate. Um, <clears throat> they're never going to make the kind of money they made in 2019. They're just not. They, they're 20% smaller. They have this much more debt. The interest, rate, the interest rates are paying are 7 to 14%. Uh, <clears throat> they've got all kinds of restrictions. This cruise line, it's possible that Carnival will sell off divisions. They might, they might have to revert to that. They might have to sell off divisions, spin off some of their cruise lines and, and shrink even more, try to offload debt with cruise lines. They're, they're in trouble. And uh, uh, the market, totally oblivious to the reality of the situation. Carnival is in, in doo-doo, um, deep, deep doo-doo. And uh, the street, the, the, the Wall Streeters out there are um, are ignorant to the fact that these guys are in trouble. Uh, they've got four more ships they've announced they're getting rid of. Haven't told us which ones. They don't do that. They sort of announce after the fact. Um, but they're they've got oodles of ships to choose from to offload. Uh, same at Royal Caribbean. Uh, they've offloaded two ships already: Empress of the Seas, Majesty of the Seas, I believe. They've got at least four more they have to offload. Um, they're not going to sail again out of the USA. I, I can't see them. Um, Norwegian is in that funny area. They've got the, they got the youngest ships in the fleet. They broad, they uh, promote that. They brag about it. Uh, but they do have some ships in the 20 year, uh, age area. Um, and, uh, they're, they're on the edge. So some of these ships may or may not have to be uh, let go. Uh, one, just to stop the bleeding, uh, because each ship you keep floating in the water with 100 crew, 120 crew to maintain everything, you're talking three to five million a month just to keep them floating. You've got legals, insurance, port fees, uh, maintenance issues, parts, uh, specialty contractors have to come in, dry dock issues from time to time. These ships are a fortune to run. Uh, they are being attacked by salt water 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the wind at sea uh, sprays up salt water and sprays it on the decks and sprays it on the windows. And so these ships are covered in salt, salty air, salty water all the time. And the crews are constantly washing down the ships, trying to keep them spick and span, painting on top of the paint and trying to stop the rust. Um, and this just is a debilitating uh, non-stop uh, deterioration of quality of these vessels. Uh, every cruise line, every ship, no matter what it is, everyone who has a boat, anyone who has a little boat in a, in a marina in the ocean, you know that it's a constant fight to keep your uh, little vessel going from, from every, you know, every angle. I, I marvel at people who live on board ships full time and try to sail them full time. I marvel at how much maintenance they're capable of doing, how much they have to do. And if they don't do it themselves and hire pros, they better be rich because a vessel costs a fortune to keep up and going, especially depending on what you know jurisdiction you're in. Well, with cruise ships, it is worse. Uh, you've got the sound systems, the safety systems, the fire systems, the water systems, the electrical, the uh, the air conditioning systems. You have every cabin has to be maintained in pristine order. You have to constantly check for leakage, constantly check for mold. Uh, all these ships with you know, thousands of cabins each. I mean, my goodness, the visual inspections and and the uh, double checking of each of the bathrooms and making sure the seals don't dry out. And oh my God, it is just, it is stunning how much work is done. And when a ship is running, uh, add even more to the maintenance budget because now the ship is getting worn down. Everyone, every time you flush that toilet, turn on a faucet, turn off a faucet. Um, you know, just walking down a hallway on a carpet, you are wearing that thing off. And uh, that ship is slowly but surely being ground to a pulp in sea air. Uh, these vessels cost a fortune to maintain. So when they're not bringing any money in and they're, you're just, you know, throwing money at them, uh, is it any wonder that uh, between Carnival Corp, uh, Royal Caribbean Group, and uh, Norwegian uh, Cruise Lines, $1.1 billion a month right now is being lost by those three public companies just to sit there and wait. And they've been doing this since last March and it will continue till late this year. Um, it is stunning how much money these guys are losing. It's, it's scary. Anyway, there you, there you have it. That's uh, some of that info. Um, over on the stock market side, again, uh, the big news this week, uh, as far as my channel is concerned for stock markets with Bruce has been GameStop. The GameStop shares. Uh, people keep asking me, Bruce, do you still like GameStop? Do you still like GameStop? 
is I was talking about this company back in June last year when I launched the stock market with Bruce channel for the first time. And uh, I uh, was talking about that company when it was trading around four to five dollars a share. And what I mentioned to my followers at that time was uh, keep an eye on the stock. You may want to buy some on a little bit of a flyer because this company is the most shorted stock anywhere in the marketplace. Uh, back last summer, uh, there were something like 64 million shares in existence that the company had outstanding, trading around four or five bucks a pop. So the company had a capital market cap value of $300 million. Multiply all the shares by the price of the share gives you the market cap value, what the market thinks the company's worth. 250 to 300 million is what it was worth at that time. Um, so 64 million shares existed, but there were 60 something million shares shorted. Uh, which means that people had sold stock in the company thinking the shares would go even lower than the 4 or $5 range. They thought it would go to zero. These folks were convinced this company is going out of business. Why? Because of the virus. All the GameStop stores, EB Game stores, they all had to be shut down in Australia, New Zealand, the U.S., Canada, the U.K. They have stores. Five, they had 5,000 stores around the world. Everyone thought, well, with these guys having to shut down their stores, they're going to bleed red ink like you can't believe. What they didn't understand or what they weren't paying full attention to was the management of the company, even at that time, were rather prudent with how they were running things. They had the company sitting on cash uh, of over $400 million, and they had debts of less than that. So they actually had more money in the bank than they owed every everyone. They'd also reduced all their inventory by at least 45%. Through the summertime, they just kept offloading because they were still doing curbside sales and an online division that was small but working. Um, and whenever they could open a store here and there, a few states would allow reopenings. They opened up and they just brought or merchandise from other stores to these stores and just blew off merchandise. They lowered their game inventory and their overhead inventory. And of course, they're in, they're involved in the buying and selling of used games and gaming systems. And they also had one little secret weapon in their back pocket that this past Christmas, the holiday season, two new gaming systems were coming out, PlayStation uh, from Sony and Xbox from Microsoft. And uh, these guys sell gazillions of these and all the games that go with it. And so their thinking was, well, we'll just ride out this pandemic and go nice and thin, nice and thin. And uh, when the holiday comes, we'll ramp up with uh, brand new games and everything else. And everyone who's stuck at home, a lot of gamers are at home. What do they do at home? They play games when they're at home. How many YouTube channels are there that are gamers? Go a billions of them. And so these guys were ready to rack up the money. Well, there were a few investors out there who saw the future and they went, oh, there's opportunity here. Opportunity knocks. Uh, there had already been a group of investors, uh, what we call activist investors, who were buying up stock in the company. I think they got seven odd percent of the stock, and they joined the board of directors to help the company focus on a future plan. Uh, but if that wasn't enough, another activist investor stepped in, a bigger activist investor, um, a Mr. Cohen came into the uh, uh, into the mix, Mr. Ryan Cohen. This guy had a company that uh, that he had uh, taken public called Chewy, C-H-E-W-Y, I believe is the spelling, Chewy, an online seller of pet food and pet supplies. And he did rather well with that company. He sold off uh, control of that company to, uh, I think it's PetSmart, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, he landed a $3 billion win on Chewy. And uh, he, started, he started buying GameStop shares in the open market as an investor through his uh, venture capital company. He uh, uh, was, at last report, uh, he owns 13.5% of all the shares outstanding of GameStop. Remember, there are more shares shorted than exist. So this guy's buying existing stock that's trading on the market, or he's buying stock from short sellers, just handing him stock. He started buying at the $4 mark, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He was buying it all up. I, by the time he got to 10 bucks a share, he had 13 plus percent of the company. And he was disclosing the interest. As soon as he hit, I think he hit 5%, he had to disclose that he's a large shareholder. And at 10%, he's de deemed to be an insider. And he approached the board of directors as a friendly guy and said, 
hi, uh, my name is Ryan Cohen. And they're going, yeah, we know who you are. You know what I do? Yes, we do know what, do know what you do. You take companies and turn them into e-commerce winners <laughs> like Chewy. <laughs> he said, that's right. I take a company and help it go onto the east side of the market. And I would like to help GameStop become one of the leading e-commerce retailers of gaming systems and games through your existing entity. And we'll shut down stores that underperform. We'll shut down stores where landlords are charging us too much rent. We'll demand a new lease. We don't get it. We'll just shut the store and walk. Um, and we'll go online and let's make some money because being online uh, is a, a whole different dynamic than setting up retail stores with employees seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. Well, the strategy seems to be working. Um, not only has the company made a deal with him, the company has made a deal with Microsoft. They're being paid an online fee every time they sell Xbox systems. They've got a deal with Microsoft that's going to bring them all kinds of royalty money. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff happening behind the scenes that, again, the market just didn't quite get. The short sellers certainly didn't believe it. They didn't think this would happen. There are now 70 million shares shorted on a company with only 64 million shares of which activist investors own over 20% of the stock. The founders and the other employees own a bunch of the stock, a whole bunch of institutions own stock. There will not be 70 million shares available to the short sellers for them to get out of their negative position. Not a chance. And so what's happening is we have a short squeeze. The game stock shares were 8, 10, 12 bucks a little while ago. They reached uh, Oh, 14, 16, even hit 20 bucks a little over a week ago. And the people out there thought, oh, that's it right there. That's as high it'll ever get. It'll never go beyond that. 20 bucks a share is as high as the stock's going to go. It was sitting at 18.50 three days ago. And the next morning it went to 40. <laughs> at 43 yesterday, uh, the stock's going higher, going a lot higher uh, because the short sellers still haven't got out. Uh, they, they can't buy enough to get out. There aren't enough to get. And so I suspect that the shares of GameStop could go upwards of $100 a share or more. I really believe it because this is a Tesla all over again. This is just like a Tesla. Elon Musk and Tesla, two years ago, he was really upset with how many short shares had been shorted of Tesla when his shares were at that time trading around $35 to $45 a share. And this is all pre-split now because the stock has traded at least five times. And there were short sellers saying uh, at those prices, te short Tesla all you want, you're going to make nothing but money because that stock going back to a buck a share, five bucks a share. It's a, it's a complete speculative buy. Electric cars will never make it. Well, guess what happened? Uh, the shares of the uh, stock, uh, shares of the company's uh, product, Tesla's went up. The Model 3 came out. They had a gazillion cars pre-sold. Then the Model Y came out, big success. Uh, they're building factories in Beijing, selling cars from there, now building a plant in Berlin. They're going to be selling car cars to the European market from there. They're building a new plant in Austin, Texas. They've, they're expanding left, right, and center, and they, uh, the stock started to go up. And as Tesla reached $150, $200 a share, $250 a share, short sellers started to buy back their stock in a panic. i got to get my stock back. i got to get out of this negative position. I'm losing billions of dollars as, as a group. Um, but the stock still didn't stop. And so uh, uh, the uh, Musk, Elon Musk with Tesla thought, why don't I issue some stock from my treasury to the, to the stock market and raise cash while we are at these high levels? So at 250 a share, 350 a share, 400 a share, 500 a share, he's issuing billions of dollars in stock from the treasury, putting all this money, cash, into the bank account of Tesla. Right now, Tesla has, I think, over $30 billion cash on hand. Uh, no debts, um, selling cars and solar panels and battery systems, and they're expanding out like crazy. The stock is now 850 a share, is it? It's unbelievable. Uh, he's one of the richest men on the planet because of all the stock he owns. Come back to GameStop. GameStop has 64 million shares outstanding. There's That's it. That's it. There's this, this, this tiny little number of shares. That's nothing in the stock market. 64 million shares, nothing. 70 odd million shorted. Um, if the company were to do a favor, quote unquote, a favor to the short sellers, they could theoretically go to a stock brokerage firm right now and say, you know, we'd like to issue 10 million shares into the market to, at, at market sales. We'll just issue 10 million shares from the market to raise cash. And uh, we'll do it here at, uh, you know, uh, uh, 40 bucks a share, 38, 42, whatever. Let's say they got 40 bucks a share for 10 million shares. 
that stock would be picked up like that because 70 million are shorted. They have to they have to get those 70 million back. Here's 10 million of 70 million. One seventh. That stock would be gobbled up in in a day. That put 400 million in the treasury of GameStop. 400 million dollars. The company was worth 300 million dollars last summer for the whole company. That was the market cap. 300 million. The car market cap right now at 40 dollars a share. You know, even though it's trading at 36, 38, doesn't matter. Um, it's more like two and a half billion right now. That's what the company's worth right now. Two and a half billion. If they issue 10 million shares, they bring in 400 million more in cash. The company worth 2.8 billion. <laughs> Stock goes to 50 a share, 55. They issue 10 million shares there. There's another 500 to 550 million cash in the bank. And 10 million at 65 dollars a share, 650 million in the bank. You see what I'm getting at? These guys. If I think I've got this red right, and so far I think I have, I think these guys uh, would be foolish not to offer the street stock, running it up all the way to 100 bucks a share. And they could put $4 billion cash into the treasury of GameStop. And the company at 100 bucks a share would then be worth, what would there be? About 100, it'd be 100 and something million shares out. It, it would be a $10 billion company because they'd have $4 billion cash. <laughs> There's value there and the operation and the ability to do some takeovers. These guys could go shopping and start buying up competition. Just think about that. Um, if these guys raised enough cash, and I mean had access to more than what I'm even thinking about, they could buy other corporations and just get larger. They could. Uh, could they buy Best Buy? Yeah, they could buy Best Buy. Just take it over. <laughs> Stock offer. Just swap it all in. Make GameStop Best Buy one company. I'm speculating. I'm just playing here. I'm just throwing it out there for you guys. It isn't going to be done at $38 a share. It's not going to happen down here. This is way down the road. This might be a year from now. It could well be that GameStop becomes the number one dominant player in the entire gaming business from an e-commerce and other ways. There is no limit to what can happen here. These guys have got a stock right now that they've got in the palm of their hand. Their short sellers are screwed to every way to Sunday. And these guys could really take this for a run. So, folks, um, <clears throat> the shares today closed at, what, 36, 38? Are we even trading anymore? Let's take a look. Uh, we are still in the last few minutes of the day. Um, and uh, the Dow is down 113 points. Who cares? It doesn't matter. GameStop is down $3.49 right now. Uh, here is today's chart in red. You can see right here. Let's see if I can show that to you. There you go. It's down 337 at 30, uh, what is that? 3654. Sorry for the blurriness and the reflection. Um, this is cheap. <laughs> it's just my, again, I'm just saying this is what I think is going to happen. I think these guys are going to. Uh, continue to have uh, this kind of performance. I think this is what the stock's going to keep on doing. <laughs> uh, the short sellers are going to lose billions. They're already down $2 billion right now. They're down $2 billion. That's how much money these short sellers have lost right now. They're going to be down $4 billion. They're going to be grateful to be able to buy stock from the Treasury at whatever price they offer it to them so they can get out of their positions. Um, they're being forced back into this stock in a huge, huge way. Um, yeah, kids, uh, we've only just begun with this little story. Uh, this one has a long way to go. And uh, like I said, it's um, a fascinating tale. I think I even have a chart for you here. It's not that great. Um, this was earlier today. I did a one-week chart. There you go. So without, without the shaking, okay, you can see here, uh, let's see if I put my finger here. Here we go. There's 35.59 earlier today. You can see what it was a week ago, the 11th of January, the 12th of January, the 13th, and the 14th that took the shot. And, you know, there's where it is. It's not going back to $18 a share. Uh, it, it's not going back there. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised if um, a year from now we'll be looking at a chart uh, of that stock and they'll have a high of, you know, 100 and something and a low of 50. And now, you know, there'll be a whole new world because it'll be a whole different company. It'll be a different entity entirely. They're not going to be a sleepy little retailer 
with these tiny little stores and shopping malls anymore. They're, they're not going to do that. I think they're going to get out of the high traffic malls and, and build out um, stores in uh, strip mall centers, much lower rent, more, more square footage. They'll add other products in. They'll have partners knocking at their door, begging them, begging them, help us distribute our stuff because they'll be masters at e-commerce and at retail. But they might go from 5,000 locations to 1,500. Uh, it won't matter. Uh, all of us who, uh, you know, not, not I personally, I don't play games, but those of you out there who are gamers will have no trouble finding stuff through e, through uh, through uh, this company here, through <laughs> GameStop. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thank you, all of you who've been making donations to me while I've been ranting on here. Uh, I hope I'm not boring to many of you who are not into these uh, these kinds of stare, shares and this kind of stuff. But the stock market, um, there are a few gems out there, and this is one of them, I think. Uh, this is where management has control on its stock like elon musk had control um on tesla when there were hordes of analysts and i mean senior wall streeters saying this company isn't worth uh, one fifth of what it's trading at you know get out get out get out and they were looked they made they were made to look pretty bad and uh Here's, here's here you go now where Tesla is right now at eight whatever hundred a share maybe it is overpriced yeah could be but the market doesn't care the market is looking at Tesla like it looked at Amazon about ten years ago ten years ago Amazon was trading at five hundred times earnings or no earnings and it was trading at ridiculous numbers and every Wall Street analyst was going I don't think you should be buying Amazon at these levels because uh, this stock they're not making any money. Well, Mr. Bezos knew what he was doing. He just took every dime that came out of the operations and threw it right back into operations and built out Amazon, just kept building it out. And from time to time, they would raise money because the stock was at such a high price. They, he raised all kinds of cash. And so when he built a brand new distribution center costing a billion dollars, he just wrote a check for it. He had the cash in the bank for this company. Look at Amazon today, dominant player, uh, trillion plus dollar valuation. Here you go. I'm not saying GameStop's going to be a trillion dollar company. No, right now it's a two something billion dollar company, two and a half billion, but it could be worth uh, a 10 plus billion, 15 billion if they raise enough cash and diversify out enough. Watch out. This is going to be a whole different animal. Don't think that Mr. Cohen got involved to go from eight bucks a share to 30. That, that's not the strategy. He wasn't, that's not why he's there. He doesn't, he doesn't need it. He's, he made billions with Chewy. Uh, he's already rich. Uh, now it's just getting mega rich <laughs> and having something to do. And why not do something you love to do with a product you love? Obviously, he loves the product. He's in the right demographic to you know, push this company much further down the line. Um, watch out, people. Uh, this one could be really a real interesting run. The lower it goes, the more you should be buying. If this thing backs off, it backed off a little today. Three, four dollar drop on a stock that just jumped uh, 20 bucks a share this week. Who cares? No big deal. Get in there. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's just that's just me. Uh, thank you, all of you out there. Any of you who've made a killing on that stock, remember me. <laughs> I, I gratefully accept donations through PayPal uh, and uh, keep this YouTuber going so I can keep uh, bringing you new suggestions from time to time. Anyway, there you have it. Thank you, all of you, for being here today, catching up with me. Um, I just want to say hi to a few folks, and we'll pull out a trivia question. I've got to get ready to go on my other show here 27 minutes. I'm going to go live at 3 o'clock for my sponsor members for Traveling with Bruce. And um, uh, Daniel Fields is here saying hi, everybody. Jack Bauer, hello, Daniel. Keith is saying hello. Bruce, what's up? Ken, uh, Ken Kuchera. Hi, Bruce and all from Jan and Ken in Saginaw, Michigan. The temperature is 36 degrees with sleet. Gas is 235 a gallon. Ken got the first Pfizer shot yesterday. You know, we're all okay. Only getting slightly sore on. Way to go, you guys. That is great news. Um, you were reminded me by uh, saying hi to me. I've been getting in a whole bunch of mail. I mean, I've been getting in a whole bunch of your greeting cards. You folks uh, told me you were sending me cards and letters. They're arriving, including a card from Saginaw, Michigan. Exactly. Ken Kachera, Ken and Janet, thank you again for sending me yet another postcard. Uh, this came, uh, was mailed or posted uh, December the 8th. <laughs> so it shows you how late we are. I got it yesterday on the uh, 14th of January. I know there's mail out there coming my way, and I thank you all. Uh, hi, Bruce. Jen, traveling with Bruce, this is a short uh, friend's uh, drive. This is a short drive from a, a lovely beach. We look forward to all of you uh, uh, seeing us. Interesting updates. We're hopeful to cruise again someday to see Alaska. Best wishes to you, and as always, stay safe on one day. To, we'll see you one, and stay safe uh, living one day at a time. 
stay safe as ever. And thank you, uh, Ken and Janet, for that. R love you guys. I also got uh, Mr. Wes Morrison from uh, Texas sent me a, a card. Thank you, my friend, so much. Uh, uh, Christmas card in the mail and open the darn thing up. But look what's inside there. A uh, Costco gift card. Thank you, Wes Morrison, so much for that. Uh, he had uh, mentioned to me, uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to use this gift card in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and get that chicken bake you love and pick up some of the Costco ice cream that, you know, I'm addicted to. Uh, this one here from Anthony, uh, no, sorry, this is from, uh, sorry, um, uh, Andy and Andrea uh, Colonna uh, from the St. Louis area, Arc Adventures. Thank you guys for sending me this. It just arrived yesterday. Arctic Adventures, another YouTube channel. Thank you for the two, the two of you for sending me your card. Really uh, appreciate that. This stuff's going to be posted behind me here eventually. I've got so much work to do behind my uh, behind me on the wall here. It's nuts. Um, and uh, Janet and Ken Kachera, another card that came in earlier. Um, again, a Christmas card. Thank you guys. Uh, absolutely so much. I really love it. Um, and uh, you know the kindest of greetings and a, and a personal note. Um, it just, it just never, it just never ends. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Love all of you for that. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy out there, everybody. And, uh, and let's get through this together. Uh, Nathan Campbell. Thank you, Nathan Campbell for your, uh, for your card. Uh, cross the miles. It says, uh, right here, here's the card right here. And, uh, um, uh, uh, one of the Christmas trees in the banquet hall at Biltmore house. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much for your greeting for to me and Jennifer. Uh, we love getting these. Um, and the Rhymers, uh, the Rhymers sent me a card. It landed uh, this week, just the other day. Um, and this is an amazing card. Oh my gosh, check this card out. Those are real stockings hanging out there. Like they're, like they're, th th this is, there's a real bow. This isn't printed. This is like a real deal. It's got a, a hook here and and uh, felt with three or four layers of of material on here, really great. Let me just zoom in on that. It, and it says, look at that. It says uh, Bruce, Jen. Look at that one. How about that? Uh, very very impressive. Have a merry Christmas and a safe happy New Year. Thank you from the Rhymers. Thank you, uh, uh, Marty and Rebecca Rhymer so much for this wonderful card man you guys some of you guys just go to unbelievable lengths uh i just love it and uh, it's very much appreciated again thank you all for uh popping in to say hi to me today uh without any notice uh, as i pop up the show here uh, again cheers to all of you from traveling with bruce uh, hello a couple of quick hellos before I do the trivia question because we got to do this quick here. Um, Hell just saying, Ronnie, I don't know what that means. Kirk, uh, hi, Bruce and TLB family. Kirk from the Big Apple is in the house, still at work, but I got to tune in. Buddy, nice to see you. Colleen Sachs, hello, Colleen. One of my new sponsor members along with Kirk, um, uh, uh, Kirk Brunson, thank you. David, sponsor member as well. Good afternoon, 33 Fahrenheit and falling, light blowing snow. Good day, be inside in central Kansas. Uh, Stephen Farrell, hey, Bruce, hey, Stephen. How's it going? How are you doing, David? Account opened and ready to follow any named stocks. Um, Nikki, um, uh, hi, everybody. Greetings from Jacksonville, Florida, 70 degrees and sunny. Uh, hi from central New Jersey, says Sharon. Welcome. Uh, yes, you are live on both channels, she says. Peter Heckema, hi, Bruce and everybody from Tarpon Springs, Florida. How you doing, pal? Nice to see you here. All of these sponsor members are popping in. Uh, Sharon, I have both going, but I'm just listening to TWB. Fred B., hi, Bruce. I have a cruise on Carnival Mardi Gras, June the 12th. What are your feelings? Uh, do you think it'll be a go? Um, I don't think so. I hope so, but I'm I'm not sure if it'll happen. It might be delayed. Uh, Kathy, good afternoon. Watching while working at my kitchen table, aka my home office. Kathy Mills, thank you for being here today. Uh, Sharon, oops, I take it back. I'm on the stock market channel, but I'll toggle to the TWB page. <laughs> it's all good, folks. I appreciate those of you who are watching me on Traveling with Bruce, Stock Markets with Bruce. Those of you who are watching me on Facebook right now. Welcome to the trifecta, all three live. DJ Marinelli, hi, Bruce from Pittsburgh. DJ, what a bad week we've had this week. It's been pretty rough. It's been about a bad six weeks or so, hasn't it? 11 and 0, and then 1 and 5. Not not good. It was it was not a good ending. Um, hi, everybody from uh, Sharon. Daniel, hello, all. I have a UK cruise July 2022. I like your odds. Uh, Jen uh, spent most of the day trying to prime my. My money out of Crystal's clutches with not, not much success. Guess I should have invested in GameStop. 
Um, Foxy, hello there, Bruce, my good man. It's Foxy in Brighton in England speaking. Nice to see you as, also, as always. Thank you, Foxy, buddy. Nice to have you here. Uh, Louise, I love your beautiful, smart voice. Thank you. Uh, Foxy, I'm not entirely surprised that the not surprised that the cruises heading out of the UK are being delayed for the summer of 2021. The vaccinations will take time, so I think that's why uh, uh, it'll be with the rate. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, Foxy, it's going to be a long time. John Lewis is saying hi. Uh, Foxy, I only meant to take, make a realistic point. It's okay, Foxy. You're all good with me. John Lewis, I'm supposed, I'm surprised that no one has raised the issue of the amount of pollution that is put in the sea when they scrap these ships, uh, basically dumped on a beach and they dismantle them. Well, John, um, keep this in mind. Um, in Turkey, when they bring the ships in for scrappage there, there are very strict uh, uh, um, Euro rules, uh, uh, the EU, the European Union rules for, for uh, disposal of ships. Uh, they have pollution, everything there. They, 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 uh, all the components and, and materials all have to be accounted for. In India, it's a little looser. I agree, uh, but I'll tell you, a huge percent, like ninety something plus, maybe ninety seven, ninety eight percent plus, those ships, those are those are recycled parts. So the, the the steel gets remelted and reused. Now, I will admit, you know, when you take recycled steel, chop it up, and then remelt it, you're putting vapor into the air. You're polluting again, aren't you? Uh, but it, they are not being left to rot on a beach. They are being cut apart and used. But it ain't pretty. Uh, it's like making sausage. It isn't pretty. I agree with that. Terry, 3 Celsius, 37 Fahrenheit in French Lake, New Brunswick. Gas a buck oh eight a liter in Canada, 323 US a gallon. We are at a dollar fifteen a liter here. So we're closer to 360 US a gallon here. Foxy, where's Sylvan, the fabulous Sylvan regular says, oh, he might be around here. I hope he's okay. Um, uh, Sharon, 12 thumbs up so far, the Stock Market Channel, 23 on TWB. Thank you for thumbs ups on both channels, guys. If you can do that, that would be great. Sir, if I was speculating negative, Bruce, I didn't mean it. Still fairly. No, you're all good. Foxy, you're always good with me. John, uh, so Bruce, if you had 10K, how much would you, in would you invest it? How would you invest it? Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a topic for another show. I don't have enough time today to get into it. But one of these days, we'll talk about that on the other channel uh, on Stock Markets with Bruce. Jack Barr, hey, Bruce, any thoughts on Disney stock? Avoid, avoid Disney stock. I, I don't like it. Um, Foxy Sylvan will <laughs> probably join the 3 o'clock members. Joe Wanda, hey, Bruce, I gave you a thumbs up here. Heading over to TWB. I'm going to give you a thumbs up there. Thank you. Uh, thanks indeed for reminding me, says <laughs> Foxy Sylvan. Sylvan is here. Hi, Bruce and everybody. How you doing, buddy? Welcome to the show. Uh, Jen, uh, there you are. Hello, Sylvan. Wanda. Uh, hello from California. Appreciate the updates. Tom Henry, hello, TWB friends. Um, uh, so, uh, Sharon is deep due to an official financial markets term. Yeah, another one is zzz, that's another official one, deep doo doo. Uh, Daniel, hello, Wanda Seward, also California. Terry Gallant, grandeur of the seas to home port out of Barbados. That is correct. I did a video of that earlier this week. Uh, Jan is saying hi, Tom. Wanda, hi, Daniel. John, uh, hi, all from uh, Northamptonshire. Tom, I got a new cancellation email late Wednesday for February 7th, 2022. Good news. It'll save me a fortune. That cruise is a bit pricey. Very interesting. Uh, Jan, Tom, what ship? What trip? Foxy, are you uh, male or female? He's male. He's a male. Um, uh, just want to make sure he's male. Uh, Roger, hi, Bruce. Enjoy your shows. Dave, I love the video of the captain of the edge going room to room, flushing toilets and turning on water. Yeah, that's true. That's what they're doing on every ship. Jack Bauer, hi, John. Um, hi, John, back from Maryland. All right. Uh, John Lewis is here. Hi, John. Uh, who else do I see here? I'm running out of time to say hi to everybody. I'm just quickly going through the messages that came through here. Uh, Emma is hi here. Hi, Emma. Hey, everybody. Hey, Foxy. Hi, Emma. Nice to see you here today. Uh, she's saying, hey, Tom. Uh, people are agreeing with Foxy. Sharon, 15 thumbs ups on stock markets, 31 on TWB. Remember to hit the thumbs up button for Bruce. Thank you, everybody, for that. Um, a quick little hi. Paul Romero, thank you for your uh, uh, Super Chat contribution. I asked on, on his channel, if you and Tony, three amigos want to get do a show once a month, uh, what do you think? Oh, I'd love to do one every month with these guys, uh, but they're pretty busy like I am, and I, I haven't heard from them lately. We did, Last time we did a show was, I think, in October, so I don't know if we'll do another one soon or not. John Lewis, five British pounds to uh, TWB. Thank you. Great channel, Bruce. Don't I won't sailing will happen until late October, early November. Thank you uh, very much for these uh, Super Chats, and also thank you to... Uh, um, someone gave me a, a donation on PayPal while I was doing the show. Um, and I just want to make a, just announce that again, acknowledge that very, very, uh, generous donation. Uh, there we go from Sharon Chapman. Thank you, Sharon, uh, for your donation sent to me on uh, PayPal. 
Uh, that is absolutely wonderful of you. All right, I have a trivia question for you guys. Uh, before I get off the air here, and I thought I would uh, pop it up here. Let me just kind of get my phone back in order here. Um, let's see if we can do this uh, trivia question, and then I'm going to say my goodbyes because I got to go to the other side in 16 minutes. My sponsor member show on Traveling with Bruce will begin, and um, I want to uh, get that done on time. That's where we'll play the rest of trivia. And thank you, all of you who are uh, who are uh, going to be joining me there. All of you are sponsor members. Love you guys. Uh, JNN Travels is saying hi to me. Ron Clark is saying hi. Uh, two of each. Uh, Mom, hello from Michigan. With some beautiful Florida State. Well, welcome to the show. Nathan is here. Nathan, buddy, how are you? Marty, oh, glad you received our card and enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, Stock Doctor, what is the name of your second channel? I'm on the Stock Market one. Uh, I'm on Traveling with Bruce and Stock Markets with Bruce. Those are my two channels. Traveling with Bruce and Stock Markets with Bruce. And I uh, love having all of you here. Please subscribe to both channels. Give thumbs ups to both channels. Hit the notification bell on both channels. You'll be alerted every time I do a video, especially on that stock market channel. You want to find out my next stock, hit the bell notification icon. All right, let's get this uh, going here. I'm going to see if I can uh, set up my uh, first trivia question. If I can, uh, we'll go right here. And um, I've got a special question just for you guys on this channel right here, <laughs> on this show right here. Uh, let me just set this up right there, and it's ready to go. Okay, um, I uh, have um, a question that has a, a 100 possible correct answers. Uh, you're not going to get them all, but let's see how well you do on this one. And um, and uh, Foxy wants to know, what's your favorite place to go in the UK? I, I can't decide yet. I've been to London, been to Bath, been to Dover, been to Portsmouth, been to Bristol, but I haven't seen the rest of the country yet, so I can't give you. I love all of it. I just love the UK period. It's absolutely fantastic. Really would like to uh, see more of it. Um, how's uh, Jennifer? She's fantastic. Tom Henry, I like Earl's Court. Uh, there you go. All righty, here's your question for trivia today on the live telecast. Um, can you tell me the names of uh, all of the characters that have appeared on the Simpsons show, the, all the characters on the Simpsons television show. For the first 26 seasons, um, um, the number one character has had 564 appearances. The number 100 character is around 11. Um, tell me your favorite characters on the Simpsons, and I'll start knocking them off here. And uh, let's see how many you get. Um, Terry Gallant has Barney. Uh, who, who the heck is Barney? Um, uh, is there is there like a Barney? Uh, is there actually a Barney, a di the dinosaur on that show? I don't I don't know. Bart, yes, I do know. Bart is uh, definitely uh, 562 times Bart Simpson has appeared. Uh, everyone's got Bart, Bart, Bart. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Krusty the Clown. I love Krusty the Clown. 236 appearances for <laughs> Krusty the Clown. Oh, Krusty the Clown. Uh, who else have we got? We got Homer, of course. Homer Simpson. Then we have Lisa. Thank you. Uh, let's see who else we got. Mo. Mo as Selzliak, the bartender, 376 times. We got Krusty Sideshow Bob. Yes, Sideshow Bob, 17 times. I think that's the voice of Kelsey Grammer. Um, Barney uh, Bruce is the drunk character on The Simpsons. All right, Barney. Uh, fantastic. I will find Barney. Thank you. Yeah, Barney Gumble. 177 appearances. Thank you for helping me with that. We've got Smithers. That's right. We have Smithers. <laughs> oh, it's just the names make me laugh. Uh, Smithers. I'll find Smithers here eventually. Um, but yes, that is a correct answer. Uh, who else we got? We got Marge, of course. Marge Simpson, 563 appearances. Uh, Maggie. Uh, that's right. We've got Maggie. Uh, I'm not showing her fast. Well, she's here. We have Kirk, someone named Kirk. Uh, who is Kirk? Uh, Kirk. Looking for the name Kirk on, uh, on The Simpsons. Uh, can't find it quickly. Mr. Burns. That's right. We do have Mr. Burns. Uh, we've got uh, Montgomery C. Montgomery Burns. That's right. Uh, Milstein, or is that Mill Millhouse? Millhouse Van Hooten. 323 times. Uh, it's crusty just to say some of you accidentally misspelled crusty. <laughs> um, Surly, S-U-R-L-Y. Surly, another another uh, uh, character here. 
Um, I'll find it eventually. Apu, yes, we have Apu. I'm not going to pronounce the last name. 196 appearances. Uh, there's Patty. Patty. Uh, <laughs> tell me your favorite Simpsons characters. Uh, Millhouse, there's Selma. We've got Selma Bouvier, the sister of uh, of, uh, Mar of Marge, uh, one of the two sisters, I guess. Uh, who else have we got here? Mrs. Bouvier, that's right. Her mom, that's right. Howard Green, hi, Bruce. Sorry, I'm late. Looking forward to the sponsor member show at 3 o'clock. We, uh, we start in 11 minutes. Uh, Kirk Brunson, this is funny. Sideshow Bob, Sideshow Mel. There's a Sideshow Mel. That's right. There's another Sideshow character. <laughs> Oh, I love these names. These writers who came up with these incredible names. Uh, Kent McClure. Kent McClure. Oh, I love some of these. I'm looking and I'm looking. I'm looking. I, I can't find them all. I got, I've got a gazillion of them here. Um, have you been to Brighton in England at all? Um, I can't remember if we were in Brighton or not. Ned Flanders. Ned, Ned Flanders. 280 appearances. Uh, we've got uh, Ralph. Um, someone says there's a Ralph. There is a Ralph. Ralph Wiggum. Isn't he the, uh, is he the cop? Uh, I'm not sure. We have Bart. We have Chief Wiggins. Chief Wiggins. Uh, Nelson and Fat Tony. Oh, I love that one. Fat Tony. Uh, <laughs> you can't do that in real life, but you can certainly do it with the cartoon characters. Call somebody Fat Tony. Um, not the late Kirk Douglas, I'm guessing. <laughs> Carl, Marge, um, who else are being guests? Who else have we got guests here? We got Lenny being guest. Ralph, Ralph, Sideshow Bob, uh, Sitka, Alaska. What does that mean? Grandpa Simpson, Lionel Hunt. Yes, we've got them all. Uh, let's see. Lenny Leonard, uh, Chief Wiggum, Seymour Skinner, Carl Carlson, uh, Nelson Muntz, Abe Simpson. That's Grandpa, I believe. Kent Brockman, Dr. Julius Hibbert. Waylon Smithers, groundskeeper Willie from the school, Officer Lou, Sideshow Mel, Mayor Quimby. Uh, that's right, the bar flies. There's Mayor Quimby. Uh, last time I started to die, do you recruit? I agree with you. Loreen, that's Abe Simpson, grandfather, just to say. Dr. Dr. Frank, uh, Jimbo Jones, Rabbi Hyman Krustovsky, Dr. Fink, the scientist, Santa's little helper, the dog, comic book guy, Edna Crabapple. That's right, Edna Crabapple, who Crabapple. is, cra what? Crabapple. Crabapple, Edna Crabapple. <laughs> That's right, Edna Crabapple. <laughs> that is correct. Oh, I lost my place here. I'm trying to find the, uh, where I left everything off here. <laughs> here we go, Edna Crabapple. There we go. Thank you, John Lewis. A Reverend Lovejoy, Itchy, Willie, Scratchy, comic book guy. Okay, let's read up some more. Otto Man, Reverend Lovejoy, Jimbo James, Edna Krabappel, Martin Prince, Jeff Albertson, comic book guy, Kearney Ziskwitz, Patty Bouvier, Cleta Spuckler, Superintendent Chalmers, Professor Frink, Agnes Skinner, Snake Jailbird, Dolph Starbeam, Captain McAllister, Kirk Van Hooten, Todd Flanders, Jasper Beardley, Rod Flanders, Hans Molman, Rainier Wolfcastle, Helen Lovejoy, Officer Eddie, Elizabeth Hoover. They just keep on coming. They keep Reverend Lovejoy. Terry from Marietta, home of the Big Chicken, Georgia. Um, uh, I think we got Bruce really laughing, says Foxy. Uh, Todd Blount, Bleeding Gums Murphy. <laughs> Maud Flanders, Steve Freeman, Squeaky Voice Team, Judge Roy Snyder, Brendan Bren, Bren, Spuckler, Gil Gunderson, Luigi or Luigi Risotto, Rick, Rich Texan, Old Jewish Man, Bumblebee Man, Dewey Largo, Sherry McElberry, Dr. Nick Rivera, Itchy, Raphael the Sarcastic Clerk, Scratchy, Luan Van, Luan Van Hooten, Troy McClure, Blue-haired lawyer, Lindsay Nagel, Database, Disco Stew, Janie Powell, Terry McElberry, Lionel Hutz, Fat Tony DeMarco. We got Fat Tony. Mafia Louie, Kang, Kudos, Duffman, DJ Marty, Derek Tatum, DJ Bill, Ma Manjula, uh, that's Apu's wife, I think, or kid, I don't know, God, Cookie Kwan, Mrs. Muntz, Lewis Clark, Legs, Uter Zorker, Arnie Pie, Maggie Simpson, Johnny Tightlips, Bernice Hibbert, Julio, or Julio, Dr. Marvin Monroe, Bill Clinton, Lunch Lady Doris, Eleanor Abernathy, Crazy Cat Lady, Wendell 
Borton and Sarah Wiggum. No, it's just a hundred of them right there. Oh my gosh! I have to say, Bruce uh, is looking as as content as late January. I don't know what that means. Thank you, uh, John Lewis, Seymour Skinner, Daniel. God, yes, he was in there. King Bumblebee. <laughs> yes, I meant Troy McClure. Thank you, Todd. That's that quiz. That, that's all I got time for on that quiz. Um, you want some more trivia quizzes? Join me in six minutes on Traveling with Bruce as a sponsor. Remember, we have so much fun with the trivia. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, it is too much fun with these uh, crazy TV shows and all the trivia questions we can come up with. But we do have fun doing this. Uh, thank you, all of you, uh, for being here today. Uh, special thanks to all of you from Stock Markets with Bruce. Coming by to see me here today on the Stock Markets with Bruce channel. Uh, I know that that channel is growing these days, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, 15 of you are here right now just on that little tiny channel with 1,220 odd subscribers. Absolutely incredible. Uh, the big show, the big channel, TWB, 61,100 plus subscribers. Thank you all for supporting this channel the way you guys do and, and being here and catching up with me. Every Monday, I'm live at 7 o'clock for sponsor members, 8 o'clock for all of you out there. And thank you for being here again. Thanks for watching my commercials, giving my videos thumbs ups, my live shows thumbs ups, sending me comments. Absolutely fantastic. Keep those cards and letters coming in. Um, the mailing address for Traveling with Bruce to send me anything is usually down below in all of my videos. Let's not forget Duffman. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Sharon, see you on the other side. Hit the like button on both channels. You betcha. Please do. Thank you, everybody. Um, the mailing address for this uh, channel and for me, if you want to send a greeting card to Jennifer and I, you want to send us money, uh, here you go. Uh, Box 941, Creston. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, it's a treat to go down to the post office uh, several times a week and just see if anything's come in from the U.S. or around the world. Um, the number of you I know have sent me items. I keep my eyes open for them, and I know a number of you have been receiving cards from us. If you'd like to get a postcard from us, here in Crestna, I'd be happy to send you one of our postcards. Traveling with Bruce, uh, just make a donation on PayPal of ten U.S. dollars or more, and I'd be happy to mail you out one of these wherever you are, and get yourself a TWB postcard from Creston, British Columbia. Thank you all so much. I'm going to say my goodbyes now, and again, uh, thank yous uh, to get ready for the sponsor member show here on Traveling with Bruce for sponsor members, and again. Uh, have a great weekend, all of you out there. Keep an eye on both of my channels. You never know when I upload next. Uh, make sure to hit the bell notification icon, and you'll be alerted every time I do a new video. There it is, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Foxy, for being here. Uh, you take care. Be safe yourself. Uh, uh, appreciate that. Um, John Lewis saying take care, everybody. We'll see uh, the sponsor members in about three minutes here on the other side, and everyone else, keep an eye on the channel, and we'll definitely see you Monday at 8 o'clock for the big live show. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, stay warm, stay, stay safe, stay healthy. Remember the social distance. Do what they tell you. Get your shot when you can. And we'll talk to you later, everybody. Bye for now.